Hey guys, I'm super thrilled to be live in Swissborg headquarters, Lausanne, as you can see behind it. This is the beautiful city, uh, Lausanne, Switzerland. And today we're gonna talk about DAOs. So what is a DAO, right? A lot of people have talked about blockchain, talked about smart contracts, but we don't always often mention what is the mothership? What is really the ecosystem founded out of? And it's founded out of DAO. Those three magical letters stands for D for decentralization. What is really mother earth of blockchain, right? The ecosystem, how it's decentralized everywhere. What does autonomous mean? It means that it's something that is driven through technology and that there's no middleman and there's no central authority to it. And organization, it's just to make sure that it is a network, a community that is formed around a topic. And you could sum up a DEO, like probably the most awesome ecosystem where there's no central authority, where that people gather, a community is gathered for one purpose through a protocol of smart contracts. And that within that DEO, each person is represented in some way through a smart contract. And that's how what CEO essentially is. So maybe before now getting into the more specifics, let's think about why do we come to this stage today? Well, how come society has evolved to go to a DEO? When I was a kid, um, I lived in I lived in the States, I moved to France, and I was always looking for break dancing music and you know, a lot of break beats. And back then, you know, there's barely CDs, only you know, cassette tapes, and the only way to get cool music was like I would have to call my cousin in New York and she would send us like very cool Wu Tang clan music or so different break beats. Until that one day my brother and I we discovered the first sort of DEO, which was the first actually marketplace where people were actually able to share digital assets. Yes, this was Napster. Napster was the first place where you could connect on a platform, where you could share digital files together if you trusted that person, right? Where you would go onto the, that movement, say hey to DJ, like, hey dude, you're in California or in Tokyo, my name is Cyrus, I'm a b-boy, I, really, I would love to get your music, it's really great, would you mind sharing it with me? And that was the first time that through this peer-to-peer -peer exchange you were able actually to get data out of people. But not only just an email, actually data that was valuable for us. And that day I was like, wow, this is great, this is actually, you know, changing the whole way of thinking. From that, we moved to the next generation of DEOs, which is how we brought in decentralization, even a step further up, which was really Emule and eDonkey, right? It was a place where it was the same concept, you're able to share files, you're able to share music, movies, images, whatever you want, but at a very faster speed and at a trust full network. You didn't need to ask the permission to DJ because everyone would upload their files and you would download those files based on all the different networks. So this was the first type of decentralization where it was groundbreaking. It was really one of a kind that would disrupt forever the main I buy just a, I'm just a product buying another product in another, in another shop. This was the first way you had an ecosystem that together you could probably revolution the world. That was like in the early 2000s. And then we got to, uh, let's say, the platformization stages, right? Where you had Amazon, then you had Uberization, and all these great platforms where you have that peer-to-peer -peer Airbnb, and all these great platforms that are taking over every industry. I mean, Airbnb, obviously, it's today uh, much bigger than any hotel management. Uh, in, uh, industry, right? It's the biggest one, doesn't have a home. Uber doesn't own a taxi, it's bigger than any taxi company in the world or transportation almost. So what happened in 2007 when Sati Satoshi Nakamoto with his decentralized group said, why would not we take that same philosophy that we feel in these amazing platforms such as Napster or email, the decentralized movement, and on top of it, add cryptographic 
and on top of that, create tokens that you could exchange value. And that value represents the intrinsic value of the network that could be billions, trillions, whoever wants, based on how much the community grow. So in 2007, in, in order to fight against the system, which was banks going for leverage, creating toxic products, being people that would not be, have any ownership on their future, the value of the financial system, said, you know what, guys? Let's create something much better. Let's create a decentralized blockchain where you would be able to exchange value by trading bitcoins, by doing transaction of bitcoins. And this is where everything really got clear in mind is that you have the centralization in one side, you have encryption on it, and you have tokens that have value. So now it's not that you're just sharing different pictures and videos. No, now you're actually sharing value that has ownership to it because you have the encryption on top of it. So this is where it became the big shift and which I think so will transform everything, all value and data going forward. And we are, thanks to Bitcoin, we're going through a massive breakthrough, a revolution of data, a revolution of infrastructure and ownership. Now, Swissport. Are we a pure DEO? Yes, no. Are we a hybrid? Most probably. As you guys know, and thank you so much, we have reached our hard cap during ICO in early 2018 which went fantastic well. Over 149 countries have contributed for the amazing amounts of 50 million Swiss francs. This was a fantastic thing. And we really embraced the few decentralization movements where we had, you know, every country essentially participating, like even a better market penetration than that shitty McDonald's, right? And the idea of Swissborg is how we could bring to be a DEO, how that one day our protocol could be fully decentralized, autonomous, right? And that we won't have that organization. I will not be sitting behind this camera as a CEO, but as a token holder, such as you guys. And we all together will take the right decisions for the future of a DEO by our referendums that we already took care in 2018 that did very well. And as the C as the movement will grow more and more and we'll have more and more products and service. The utility of the CHSB will just increase. We'll have more and more utilities as we are planning for the ICO platform, as we're applying as well for the crypto app that we'll be releasing at the end of the summer. And with other deals, which is fantastic, is that by the end of March, we're actually releasing our first community app to be downloaded on Android, but as well as on iOS, which would be awesome. I'm not gonna talk about it too much because you're gonna probably read it in the press very soon, but it'll be a very great way to, again, contribute, be part of the, our meritocracy, and as well, learn wealth management. It's a real great network where you could connect, you would learn and earn uh, through our, our community app, which is really amazing. I hope you really liked this video. We talked about the DEO and how, how we could break it down in terms of technology, philosophy, and as well uh, what we're doing at Swissport. We'll have many other this video, so please keep tuned in. Like, share, comment. If you love the video, please comment it. If you didn't like it, please comment it. I will answer back like always. And um, if you haven't signed up uh, for the, re the release of our app, please check our website and share your email. A lot of love, guys. Thank you very much for your support and keep in touch. As you know, my name is Cyrus Fazel. I'm the proud founder and CEO of Swissport. Keep tuned in, guys. Thank you.